So I died and I was in this black abyss falling so fast and I was so scared. And the first thing I said was the Shahada. I was screaming and I can't scream it like I did in my dream because the cops will be here. But I screamed. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I said it like eight times screaming and my soul told me, you're wrong, it's not true. You are going to hell for eternity. And let me tell you something guys, I cannot even explain it in words. The feeling of what hopelessness is, it doesn't compare to the hopelessness you feel in this world. You feel it a million times worse. Man, I got chills, I'm sorry. I never did this before, so bear with me. So as I'm falling so fast down, it's pitch black. All I see is this white, white light flying around me in circles fast. And I'm falling. I knew it was my guardian angel. And this guardian angel's voice was the, the only way I could explain it to you in, in life is it's the most scariest and the most beautiful voice in one. That's the only way I could explain this angel's voice. And it was coming from this ear to this ear, back and forth. Amir, Amir, you have to listen to me, please, please. And this angel was so desperate for me. He was like, please, you have to listen to me. You have to tell him he can still hear you. Tell Jesus to save you before your soul leaves your body. You have to tell him this before your soul leaves your body. Hurry, hurry, do it now, do it, do it. And I'm still, and like, while I'm falling, I'm like, there's no way, how can this be? How can this be? How, how, how? You know, I'm even still denying him even in that moment. And I'm looking down and I see another, like a portal, a pit. And right before, right before I went in that pit, I, I said, Jesus, please come into my heart and save me and a big boom and a flash light. My soul came right into my body. It felt like a truck hit me and my body came out of my bed and I'm like, oh, my, I'm sweating everywhere. I'm like, oh my God, you're not gonna believe what happened. You're not gonna believe what happened. This was like three in the morning. I'm like, oh wow, I can't believe this. Wow. And I'm crying, I'm doing this and this. And me being the stubborn OCD person that I am, I wasn't like my uncle brave enough to get on my knees and ask Jesus to save me. So I said to myself, there's no way this is happening to me. There's no way I'm gonna read the Quran. There's no way I gotta read the Quran. This can't be happening. So. I took eight months to read the Quran from February 1st all the way to about October. But as I was reading the Quran, I would read it. And as I'm reading it, all I hear it more intense, intense. The only one who can save you, you have to tell him. It's all I keep hearing. And then when I came to the verse about the crucifixion of Jesus, that's when it sealed the deal for me. There is no way possible that the Almighty God will deceive and trick billions and trillions and billions of people that believed in Jesus. Because remember, Islam is 600 years after. So there's trillions and zillions of people that lived 600 year, within a 600 year span that believed in Jesus Christ. What about those people? Did they go to hell because they weren't Muslim? Okay? Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And he did so much for me and he saved me. And I owe him my life, I owe him everything. As long as I could just reach one person and help that one person to seek, and that's all that matters to me. Jesus says, one lost sheep is worth more than the 99. And he will seek out that sheep if you seek him. And I love him, and I'm so grateful and so gracious for him.